Greetings YouTube and welcome to the Blue Corner and to the first Hard Fight Vanguard video on this channel for the new year and we're going to start off with, as you would expect, a Dragonic Magnetic Deck Profile. It's been a while since I featured this deck on the channel but I have been playing with it since the last profile and making some adjustments. The current list I have right now is just what I've come to for the current format. For those of you wondering, no, this is not a meta deck anymore. It's firmly entrenched in Tier 2 along with basically everything else that was Tier 1 at the time of this deck's release. As we're at the point now with each releasing booster set, the format just shifts dramatically. Like, Link of Joker set shifted the format, set 13 shifted the format, Zoo's gonna shift the format, and yeah, many decks just end up falling behind. Like, Zodiac Time Beast is in danger of falling down to Tier 2 when Zoo comes out. That's just how crazy things are getting. But I digress. This deck, it's not bad, but it's also not good either. Like you have bad matchups against many of the meta decks, and short of you getting really lucky or your opponent just being really bad, it's going to be a very uphill battle against the likes of Overlord, Chaos, and especially Thava's. The Thava's matchup is arguably the worst of the bunch because it can rush and it has resist up the ass, and that's difficult for this deck to deal with when you're main form of thunder striking is turned off which is your ability to bind things on the field not to mention our best g guard is pretty much useless when you can maybe kill one of their many rear guards and that's a big maybe like when i look over thava's list it's like jesus christ so much resist and neo nectar is not going to be any better when that comes out so just those are some little snippets plus there's the issue of this is an inherently inconsistent deck and we're also kind of slow in the early game, and as a result, you have just a recipe for not a fun time at a major tournament. I would still maybe play this at a major tournament because I feel like this is the deck I'm most comfortable with, but I'm sure if I really wanted to win, I'd probably just take ZDB, Night Rose, Post Rosal, or Neo Nectar. So, yeah, that's my little feel about the deck in its current status right now. And um, yeah, I'm really hoping we get a movie set or something that can shore up these problems because unfortunately we're not getting a set 15, which is when I thought Vanquisher would get his next batch of support. <sighs> and that's very disappointing because that means we will not be getting an effect heal trigger, which would be really useful. And good lord, we could use a new Vanquisher Grade 3 and an Extend Flare Dragon Clone. Like, give me something like that. V Buster is an okay first ride, but compared to some of the other first strides we're starting to see now, he's not as good of a first try as he used to be. That being said, let's dive right into this. I apologize for the long wait, but I just wanted to get that stuff off my chest. So, actual deck profile starts now, and it begins with Lizard Soldier Saishin. No, not Lizard Soldier Saishin. <laughs> Hard Rock Dragon Kid. I have been thinking about Saishin, though, and we'll get to him in a moment. So, Hard Rod is, of course, a stupid starter, and he is something that... If your opponent can kill it, they will, because if he's able to just sit there and start doing his thing, then good things happen for you. Now, as far as Saishin goes, I've actually thought about running a single copy in here to serve as a starter for when I know I'm going up against Chaos and Overlord, because obviously they're going to kill Hard Rob before they can actually do anything, whereas Saishin can at least threaten to kill their own starter, which could actually lead to some fun things. Your opponent might not want to damage you early, because then the moment you ride to grade 2, you just swing it, swing at their vanguard, hit, oh, there goes Conroe, and stuff like that. So it's something I might try in the future, and I think I might know what I will cut for it, but for the time being, it's just the one forerunner. Then for the grade 3s. Four copies of Sparking, he is our best grade 3, obviously. One copy of OG Vanquisher. My locals allows me to get with running with this thing, as I go up against decks like Nubatama fairly frequently, so being able to just deny Mujin Lord getting maximum value is always a nice thing. But against the meta though, no, this thing's not good at all. So if you are going into a more competitive environment, then you can cut this guy for either a third Sigma or the Saishin as I just mentioned. And then running it out, two Sigmas. If you're running less than two in this deck, you're crazy. Like, I'm just going to be brutally honest there. This card is so good in this deck and in just about any narrow variant. Then moving on from the threes, we go into the twos. Four copies of Chakra. These are one of our best early game cards. And then this is where some real spice happens. Four copies of Dragonic Death Scythe. So I talked about this guy before in the last profile and how I thought about running him and I've ultimately come around and 
Yeah, I am running him. Is the basic idea of Martial Arts Dragon applied once more? It punishes your opponent for rushing you down early game by being able to kill their units that they fielded, except unlike Martial Arts Dragon, this guy works on both Vanguard and Rearguard, so you can ride him, kill something, or later on, call him, kill something, and unlike Martial Arts, he can also hit any one or less on the board, so that includes their starter. So say your opponent rides to grade 1, comes at you, and they flip a crit. Oh no, I'm at 2 damage. CB2, kill your starter. Hard rod skill, bind it. Look at that. And then, yes, CB2 means you can't, say, do this and, like, get maximum value, get a kill plus a draw. But you can still get the kill with this, and you can still threaten your opponent to either guard or take a damage. If they take a damage, then that helps you by getting you closer to killing your opponent. Or they guard it, and that's another card for Hard Rod to bind by the time you get to grade 3. And if you went first, that means you get to end your grade 3 turn of Thunder Strike 2, so even if your opponent snipes this off, locks it, whatever, you've at least done something with Hard Rod. And what else can I really say about Death Scythe? The CB2 is expensive as hell, but when you think about it, this deck has five counter chargers at its disposal. We've got VN, Smash Boxer, Sparking, Thunder Strike 4, Hard Rod, yeah, Hard Rod if your opponent has nothing that drops on the bind, and no, whatchamacallit. Meditate Draco Kid when you use them with MP Dragon, which chances are you will. Uh, what else can I say on this guy? Like, he... Yeah, he's just... He's selective for tiring. We have enough countercharging to more or less mitigate his cost to it likely being CB1. And he's not GB locked, which is also important because all of my grade 2s do something pre-stride. Which is just starting to become a very important thing when you look at the top decks. Like, almost every grade 2 in decks going forward have a value pre-stride, and I just want to do as much of that as I can with this deck. So, Grizel is the last grade 2, as unlike, say, Rock Climb Dragoon, she can at least get around Resist by being able to just attack a circle, and she just gets big. Like, she's kind of like Nahalem in the sense that during your major stride turns, she'll be 21 or above, Except unlike Nahalem, she can kill something, but Nahalem's free, whereas this one requires Thunderstrike 5 to be at least 18, but then getting the Thunderstrike 5 after first stride's not that difficult. At least you'll end you'll end your first stride at Thunderstrike 4, and then you'll get the Thunderstrike 5 going into your second stride turn. So yeah, but not much I can say I can say like yeah, the the destiny allows you to get around this because he targets circles too, but Aside from like things to get around resist, your opponent tries to answer this thing, they get the they have to find something, which helps you. Not much other than really say about her. Then for the grade ones, it's the same as before really. For Anastasia that are Thunderstrike, for Stride Fodders, for Smash Boxer, and for Fatines. I'm not running Helena because his GB1 is too slow, but I am running Fatine because she is theoretically live the moment you get the Thunderstrike 2. So I can draw her, slam her down, draw a card. Her stats are bad, and when we get good Thunderstrike Grade 1 units, I will cut her for it. It's just right now, I'm running her because everything else Thunderstrike has for Grade 1 is just literal garbage. No, Training Monk Dragon is not good, so he got... He's... Yeah. 14, I will take the draw one as opposed to the one-for-one -one trade off. And, mm, mm, yeah, just... No, I, I just don't like Training, training, training Monk Dragon. And the other Thunderstrike grade ones are not good, like uh, Wyvern Strike, Timrosh, or whatever his name is. That thing's garbage. And um, Dragon Dancer Bernadette, I think her name is. She's okay. In theory, you can slap her behind Sigma to force your opponent to either guard it or ret or they have to retire things. But again, the heavy resist that we have right now just kind of makes it moot point. And then for the triggers, Force Dance. I really, really want to cut these up because when Chaos is locking your board down, stands aren't really going to be doing you much good, but the counter charge is just still too useful to have in order to cut her. Four draws. I'm not running Helena, so having extra draw power helps. Draw triggers also help in getting you out of the early game as seeing them as offensive or defensive deals with your opponent rushing you down. Although why we don't have a Margo clone, I will never know. Four heals, and finally four crits of the obvious ones. And then moving on to the G-Zone. It's 
pretty no it's changed a little bit since last time so for the G's on I'm running four copies of B Buster four copies of voltage uh, two copies of VMAX although I will admit if I had access to Drachma this would be a, one of them but yeah one of these things would be Drachma because he does have some use in Empire decks it's just Obviously, I don't want to go out and get me a Drachma. The money I could spend on him is being saved up for trying to make this a real Neo Nectar deck. And yeah, as a result, I'm not running him. Then again, I don't really need Drachma to win at my locals, so it's like whatever. If I was going to like a high major tournament, then I would highly consider it. But for now, I'm running this guy in place. Voltex Zapper is not good right now because Resist gets around him, whereas this guy can at least get around Resist by forcing your opponent to actually guard the cards. It's, yeah, it's, it's a poor man's way of getting around it, but yeah, you gotta do what you can. One GB8, one Seabreeze, and then two copies of Impede, two copies of Bulwark, and one copy of Brahma. I dropped a Dismal because the Narakami Mirror Match is so non-existent that I don't care about it. I'm like, I'm not gonna worry about it. And, um... I have thought about Agleem, but Rom is just a really good, easy to achieve 25k shield that you can use if you go first and have to ride to three first, and immediately follow up with a th with a Generation Break three V Buster that you could hopefully get the Thunderstrike seven on too. Not to mention you can always just G guard with this, and then immediately go into Impede and just take it from there. So. Yeah, that's it for the deck itself. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, not much else I can really say on it. Like, the deck is pretty straightforward, and I explained the oddball choices in here and just some things I've had for ideas. As for what's next, um, good question. Like, I, I, I actually have no intention of doing a Sweet Command deck profile. I thought I was going to be playing it. It's like, nah. I'd just rather play the good Narukami deck, which is Vanquisher. I do have ZTB done, so I might profile that, and if you guys really want, I could show you just what I've been working with in regards to Neo Nectar, because I have been playtesting the new Asha stuff IRL, so I do have some opinions on the cards released in the set, so I can at least give you guys that, because you guys know the two decks, or rather the two clans I have played the longest on this channel have been Narukami and Neo Nectar, so I do have... My knowledge of Neo Nectar is not as good as my knowledge of Naros, but I do feel like I have a decent enough idea of what the deck is trying to do right now to at least tell, explain why certain things are being played and just break the deck down a little bit. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time, this is Blue Star 9 jacking out.